Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at the PDP Wired Smash Pad Pro, which is a controller for your Nintendo Switch that is primarily directed towards audiences that are looking for a dedicated uh, Smash Brothers controller. And just to answer your first question, this is an excellent controller for playing Smash Brothers. Uh, we're going to go over a review in a few seconds, but the reason I'm saying that right off the start is that this review is not going to be done based on is it a good Smash Brothers controller, because it is. It's one of the best in my opinion. And I'm actually going to be doing very soon a dedicated video where we're going to be comparing head to head the different wired Smash pads that are available out there only in Smash Brothers. So this review is going to be done as I do any other controller review. And if you want to see an exact process of how I review my controllers in more details, because we're going to do an overview as we go through the review, but we're not going to go into as specific details as the video that is up here. So if you're interested in that and you want to see exactly how I rate my controllers, do watch that video. It's, it's worth your time if you're really interested at knowing exactly how I get to the numbers. And other than that, so we're going to be reviewing it as an all-around controller. Because for those of you out there that didn't know, the reason why these are called Smash Pads is because the first Smash Brothers came out on GameCube. And back in the day, this was the main controller that you had with your GameCube for playing every type of game. So it's not like these controllers cannot play 2D side-scrollers, uh, 3D action games, racing games, and all that. Because back in the day, this was the only controller you had to play when you had a GameCube, uh, unless you bought a third-party controller in with a different format. So it is a controller that was originally designed to be able to play every type of game, and that's what we're actually going to look at today. We're going to look review it like any other controller, because if you don't have the money to start buying a dedicated controller for just one game, however you like, the first let's start with feel and build quality so honestly this is a controller that has a very good feel and a very good build quality or at least it seems so and honestly i'm going to mark it a four out of five on this side the controller has some nice weight to it it feels really good in your hands and it's actually uh, right in my opinion at a good size where if you have large hands it's not going to feel too small but if you have smaller or medium hands, it's also not going to find it feel too large. You're going to be able to easily navigate the buttons no matter what hand size you have. And the reason I can actually say this is because me personally, I have no problem using it. And my kids, which my youngest is six years old, can actually use this pad as well. It's not as comfortable for her, but it is perfectly functional. So uh, the feel and build quality, this controller will be getting a very, very good mark of four out of five. So feature-wise, this controller is a wired controller. So unfortunately, that means no rumble, although they could have maybe included it even though it was wired. It also means no til tilt sensor, and it also doesn't read Amiibo, so there's no NFC compatibility on this. However, the cable is 10 feet long, which is actually quite, quite long. However, the only downside compared to the face-off line of PDP control of standard PDP controllers uh, is that the cable is not detachable. It is permanently fixed. Uh, I appreciated the detachable cable, especially if you travel with your controllers, because they're much easily easier to store when the cable is actually not permanently attached. But nonetheless, the 10-foot cable is appreciated. That means that generally you can easily play even on a big television and be seated, seated far away enough from the TV without having to buy USB extension cables or anything like that. Uh, and aesthetic-wise, I actually really like the aesthetic on these controllers. Now, I have the Mario model, but there are different mar models out there, like there's a Luigi, there's a Peach, and they actually have more models forthcoming. So honestly, aesthetic-wise, these controllers are really attractive in my opinion, especially if you like the Nintendo properties, which PDP models most of them after. So in the this category, basically, we're, the controller is getting one basic point because, like I said, wired controllers don't get penalized for being wireless and not being wireless and not having a rechargeable battery. I will give it an extra point, like I said, for that extra long cable. And also, finally, there is the switchable uh, thumbs pad here. Basically, the thumbstick here, the second one, is actually removable and you can switch it for the traditional GameCube uh, C-Stick 
which is actually really appreciated when you're playing uh, Smash Brothers. But at the same time, the traditional uh, joystick works a lot better for every other type of gameplay, pretty much. So this is a, an additional feature that is only on the PDP controllers for the moment and is really appreciated. So that also gives this controller an extra point. And for the aesthetics, I'm giving it a bonus two points because like I said, I find these controllers are the most visually attractive smash pads out there. So that gives the score a five out of 10 for the feature and aesthetic category. So now let's move on to the most important section of the review, the gameplay results. In the gameplay section, there's one important factor I just want to go over really quick. I'm assuming you're going to be going through the few hours it takes to get adjusted to have the muscle memory of the button layout. Because the button layout for the ABXY is not traditional. It's going to take a few hours to get that muscle memory in there, especially if you're seri a serious gamer that plays games that are on more of the difficult spectrum. Okay, But once you get through that muscle memory period, uh, the button layout is actually not very, it, it is not a detriment in any way in a lot of these gameplay uh, scenarios. The only thing that I sort of recommend is that you don't travel too much between a traditional uh, gamepad and the Smash Pad for you know games outside of Smash Brothers, just because that muscle memory will sort of mess with you sometimes if you fluctuate too much between the two types of controllers. But once you get through that muscle memory, you know, part of the learning process, uh, that's the way I'll be reviewing this controller because I did put the hours in to get the muscle memory back of the GameCube controller layout. So for the first section, 3D action and FPS games. Now this controller is going to score a very strong and very uh, good 8 out of 10. And honestly, the only thing keeping this controller from a 9 out of 10 in this category is the fact that with the Switch, some games do have tilt compatibility or tilt parts to them. And unfortunately, if that's the case, well, this controller won't be compatible with that experience. And it's the only thing keeping this controller from hitting a 9 out of 10. So the official score will be 8 out of 10, but like I said, that's only because, in my opinion, I really can't score it any higher with that missing feature for this type of gameplay, since for some games, there are sections where the experience is sort of diminished if you don't have that compatibility. But overall, if your gaming type is 3D action games or FPS games, this controller will not hinder you in any way once you've got the button layout down. The thumbsticks are very responsive. I, th I find that they have some nice travel distance. The fact that the D-pad is sort of of lesser quality is not going to be a detriment in these games because most of them will play primarily with the joysticks. Uh, and overall, this is going to be a very good controller, even for long gameplay sessions, because the feel in hand is going to be very comfortable. Now, if we move on to the six, second section, which is 2D side scrollers or traditional 2D games, uh, this controller, unfortunately, the score is not going to be that stellar. It's going to be hitting only a 6 out of 10. The reason why is because I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the previous section. You can see that the D-pad on this controller was an afterthought. They didn't include a very high quality D-pad. It's also very small, meaning that the precision on the D-pad is always going to be lesser, especially in the diagonals. Okay, it's going to, you're unfortunately going to get sometimes some maybe uh, error, you know, bad presses if you play a game where diagonals are important. Uh, I'm thinking of Mega Man 11, uh, things like that. So unfortunately, I can't really score this controller any higher than a 6 in this category. Although, other than that, it's actually, you know, you, you can play those games with it. You're not going to be hindered, but you're just not going to have the best gaming experience. And you're maybe going to, from time to time, have some slight frustrations come up in some different elements. Now, on to this controller's unfortunately most troublesome section, which is traditional 2D fighters. Uh, 2D fighters, you know, we're talking about our Dragon Ball fighters, we're talking about Street Fighter, especially, uh, you know, NES and K traditional fighter like King of Fighters. And unfortunately, this controller is going to be scoring, unfortunately, 5 out of 10 in this category. Uh, the D-pad is really not 
made for these games. You're going to have a lot of trouble sometimes in putting some super moves, especially the half circle versions. The quarter circles you can get away with pretty decently, but the half circles are going to be very difficult. And for long playing sessions, the controller is going to become uncomfortable because of the size of the D-pad. If you can get around to being able to play with the joystick, which is most likely not the preferred way for serious gamers in these type of games, uh, it is doable because the joysticks are responsive enough and they have enough feedback where you can actually pull off the moves decently. But it's just not the way that most people are going to want to play these games, which is why I have to score it a 5 out of 10. And now for the last section, racing games. Mario Kart Crash Team Racing. And this is another section that this controller is going to get a very strong 8 out of 10. And unfortunately, it's the same situation as for the 3D action games. What's keeping it from a 9 out of 10 is really the fact that there is no tilt sensor in the controller. And although it is not absolutely necessary for these games, it'll sometimes dis diminishing the experience of these games to not have the option to use it. But other than this, there's a reason why uh, these controllers were designed and back in the GameCube days, we were playing Mario Kart with these controllers and there was no problem. These controllers are very comfortable for those games. And honestly, uh, it is a pleasure to play Mario Kart with a controller like this. Uh, it is a, and it will not be a hindrance in any way. The triggers are, however, um, not, you know, analog triggers. So if ever you get into a racing game where uh, the amount you're pressing the button is important, uh, these are digital triggers. So it's either you're pressing it or you're not. There's no uh, degree for the buttons. So it's not like the traditional GameCube controller in that sense. Uh, but at the same time, uh, most Switch games nowadays are made with uh, digital triggers in mind, so it's not going to come up that often, which is why I feel very comfortable. So, where does this leave us now overall? Well, overall, this controller is going to be scoring a 36 out of 55. However, it's not as well-rounded as uh, the other PDP face-off controller that we reviewed. It sort of has, you know, higher highs, but unfortunately lower lows. So basically, if this is going to be the only controller you own, you have to ask yourself, do I play a lot of 2D games or do I pay a, play a lot of 2D fighters? If the answer is yes, I would not recommend this as your main controller. However, if you play a lot of 3D action, a lot of racing games, and few 2D games or 2D fighters, well then, go for it. And especially if you play a lot of Smash Brothers as well, you will not be disappointed with this controller as your main controller. So the answer is, it depends. It depends on what your main gameplay types are, and can you afford a second controller for those gameplay types if you're serious in those games? Because like I said, you can play them on this. It's just that if you're the kind of person that will get very frustrated in a difficult game if you get a false directional input, and unfortunately you die or, what, or we have to restart a level or whatnot, well, this controller is going to give you some frustrations in those games. But in the other senses, overall, this is actually a, a very decent controller, a very solid controller. And the score is actually very strong for a wired controller, considering that it loses a lot of points just by the fact that it's wired. So overall, I don't think you would be disappointed in purchasing the PDP controller. Like I said, especially if you play a lot of Smash Brothers, but we'll get back to that in another video because that comparison video is, is upcoming where we're going to be throwing all the Smash Pads together and see if really your main game is Smash Brothers, which is the best buy overall. So, as usual, I hope you liked this video. Do leave your comments or anything down below. If you're looking at picking up the Smash Pad, I'll have affiliate links down in the description of the video. So if you want to help out the channel, just click on the link to purchase the controller. It's the same price for you and it helps me out. And as usual, I hope I'll see catch you guys in my next video.